close your eyes and focus on your breath. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. The word breath here covers not just the air coming in and out of the lungs, but also the flow of energy that you can feel anywhere in the body. You can go through all your nerves out to the pores of your skin. And the Buddha actually encourages you to try to be aware of the whole body as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Because the energy that brings the breath in and allows it to go out is connected throughout the body. Sometimes the connections are weak or they're blocked. Ideally, everything's working together. So as you're aware of the whole body, try to soothe the whole body, smooth out all those connections. Now, to do this properly, you need to bring three qualities to the meditation. One is mindfulness. That's keeping something in mind. In other words, you've, you're going to remember to stay with the breath. Try not to forget. And there's alertness, watching what's actually happening in the present moment. Is the breath coming in? Is it going out? How does it feel? Where do you feel it? Then there's ardency, which is the quality of trying to do this skillfully, trying to stay with the breath. And if you notice, if you notice that you've left the breath, come right back. In other words, you're working with a purpose here. It's important that you not deny that you're. You've got a goal in your meditation. Sometimes we're told we should meditate without any goals. But that's basically being dishonest with ourselves. If we didn't have a goal, we wouldn't be here. So you want to make sure that your practice is actually in line with the goal It's heading in that direction. So even though we're focusing here on the present moment, we're also bringing in the past and the future. The past, of course, is our ability to remember that we want to stay right here. All too often we find ourselves meditating and we come out of a blank period and we wonder, well, where was I just now? We don't want that in meditation. You want to be able to remember why you're here, what you're doing, and what you should be doing. You should be focusing on the breath. So that's bringing in your memory from the past. And there's also your intention for the future. As the Buddha said, our experience of the present is something fabricated. There's an intentional element in our experience of the body and our experience of the world around us. And it's aimed at, what's next? What's next? Where is this leading? How can I make sure it's going in a good direction? That's where the quality of ardency comes in. We're trying to move this in a direction that's going to be skillful, that's going to lead to a happiness that's more than just an ordinary happiness. Something that's really deep and really gratifying. That's the long term goal. The short term goal is I will breathe in conscious of what I'm doing, I will breathe out conscious of what I'm doing. In fact, the Buddha's instructions for meditation after you're aware of the breath and get sensitive to how it feels when it's long, how it feels when it's short, he says that you train yourself. You consciously tell yourself, I will breathe doing this. I will breathe doing that. I will breathe sensitive to the whole body. I will breathe trying to calm down the effect of the breath in the body. I will try to breathe aware of rapture. The word rapture here can mean refreshment, just a sense of freshness, or something more intense. You may not be able to decide how intense it's going to be, but you try to notice where in the body is there a sense of fullness. One good exercise is to be aware of the sensation of the blood flowing through your hands and try to relax your hands as much as possible. And there'll be a sense of the blood settling down there with a sense of fullness that feels good. And think of that sense of fullness spreading up the arms. And breathe in a way that doesn't disturb that sense of fullness, that allows it to spread. And 
We can breathe in and out, sensitive to ease, just the sense of relaxation, sense of well-being. Where can you find that in the body? There may be parts of the body that are in pain, that feel tense. Try to work around those for the time being. Find the parts that seem okay and give them some attention. All too often our mind goes straight for the uncomfortable parts, and the parts that are actually all right get neglected. And so for the time being, remind yourself, look all around things, the sense of space around the pain or the sense of space around the tension, where things are relaxed, where they're not in pain. Try to be consciously aware of that and let that sense spread, too. In other words, you're acting here with intention. You're not just being passively aware of what's happening in the present moment. You're trying to shape the present moment, and through shaping the present moment, the next moment and the next moment after that. At the same time, remembering your original intention to stay with the breath. So even though our primary focus is on the present moment, we're bringing past and future to bear. A clear memory of why we're here, what we should be doing, what we should be focusing on. And when you find something good, what you do to maintain it, when you find something not so good, how do you work with it? Those are the things you remember. And you remember with a purpose. We're trying to bring the mind to a state of well-being, a state of stability, clarity, unity, where it can settle down. So past, present, and future are all involved right here. It's learning how to use them skillfully, put them together in a skillful way. That's what we're doing as we meditate. Try to be mindful of the breath. Not simply watching what's happening, but realizing that we're already playing a role in shaping it, so we might as well shape it skillfully. Shape it with awareness, as the Buddha said. We shape our experience out of ignorance, and that's why we suffer. But if we bring knowledge to the process, we can use the mind's tendency to shape its experience for the purpose of putting an end to suffering. It becomes a path. That's a lot to keep in mind, but remember it's part of our training of our motivation to remember why we're here, what we should be doing. So you're training your memory and your motivation as you develop your alertness all at the same time.